Welcome to The Loop, brought to you by the Mammoth Film Festival. I am here with Michael and Christian Madsen. You guys are here with your film, Dinner with Grandma. Yeah. How do you guys it's, know it's each other? Film. He wrote it and directed it. I'm just in it. You're just in it. <laughs> but you're, you're a proud father. Oh, absolutely. My gosh, I mean, you know, I... I tried to talk him out of doing that sort of thing, but uh, he wouldn't listen to me, so. <laughs> Here we are. Christian, we can you tell it. us about your project? Yeah, this is a short I wrote. Um, it's called Dinner with Grandma. It's based off um, my relationship with my grandma, but in a heightened circumstance. So it's about a hitman on his last job. And it kind of coincides with um, every year on his birthday, he has dinner with his grandma. And so, he decides to go have dinner with his grandma and it messes everything up. The uh, bad guys go after him and he meets his girl along the way and takes her to the ride and um, yeah, the ending is, is the best part. So. And it, it actually is his grandma in real life. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it ended up yeah. being like a family affair. Like I like originally didn't even ask him to do it. I didn't ask my grandma to do it and I just wanted to you know, show my dad I can do a little short film, and even like the first time I wrote it, he, we read it. Remember, like a little, yeah. little hotel in Hollywood, and then I didn't actually read it. I just pretended I was. No, you read it because at the ending, <laughs> yeah. No, I made just, you read it. I, no, I'm no, okay. And so then, uh, yeah, but my grandma was so excited about it, and she was like, improv a bunch of stuff for me, and so she was. She has like, fun with the shotgun. Oh. That sounds like you got to see it to, to believe it. it. Well, yeah, Christian, like, is that based on real life? Did you always have dinner with your grandma on your birthday? We did. We do a breakfast, but breakfast with grandma was... Are you guys a, a, a tight family and, and really, like, stick together? Yeah, for me, me and my grandma were always very close. Like, when he would go away yeah. to work, like, she would take care of me and my brother, and I just never forgot those times. And always growing up, we had a strong relationship, and... When I started to get into wanting to direct and write something, I always wanted to make something for her. So in a way, it's mm -hmm. an ode to her. My mom's good that way, you know. My parents divorced when I was like 11 years old. So, uh, you know, I never had that family bond thing that you need your father sort of thing. And so when I became a dad, I wanted to be everything my dad was not, you know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> I think I overdid it. A little bit here and there, but I sure I'm proud of him. And Did my you mom is such a funny girl. I mean, she's so funny in the movie. It's, <laughs> I, you know, I, I look at it, I can't. I, I, she's my mom, and I can't help it. She's nominated. Notice that she's my mom at another you know. film festival for best. Actress. She got best supporting. Actress. I got an email yesterday. They were like, "Hey, just want to let you know, like, she needs to be at the award <laughs> ceremony. She got nominated." I was like, "Excuse me." Yeah. So she probably was very excited about that. Entertainment runs in the family, huh? I guess so. Yeah, I think she had a. A drama scholarship when she was a very young girl, and uh, but she got pregnant, and that was the end of that. And so um, later on, she wrote a bunch of stuff, and she got an Emmy for a short film that she directed in Chicago many, many years ago. And uh, but you know, she's mostly been a mother and a grandma most of her life, so this is kind of weird, but it's exciting and nice for her that she's in Christian's movie. You know, totally. Yeah. Did she raise you on, on classic films and, and like what was your, what was no. the first movie you saw in theaters, both of you? Uh, I think I saw The Scalp Hunters with Burt Lancaster. Yeah, or no, it was maybe it's uh, um, uh, Cool Hand Luke. Oh, wow. Me and my friends used to sneak in the theater. We used to cut school and crawl up the fire escape in the back of the movie theater and go in the window of the of the uh, manager's office, and we'd sneak in the, in the movies and just sit in the balcony and watch movies all day instead of going to school. Wow. <laughs> Paid yeah. off. Well, you know, I wanted to be a race car driver. I, I was not interested in being a movie actor at all. I wanted to be Richard Petty, basically. Okay. But, you know, that didn't work out. So, um, the whole acting thing was kind of an accident for me, but, I mean, he grew up watching me, so it was more natural for him, I think. Mm. Dude, what's the first movie you ever saw? I don't know. I was thinking like *Changing the Giant Peach* or something. Maybe <laughs> in theaters, but sure. yeah, like <laughs> for me, I just <laughs> grew up. It was natural for me to go, and this was like, even when I grew up, people are like, "What's it like having your dad?" It's like for me, it wasn't like that. It was just he went to work, 
I would watch him go to set. He would take me to set. Like, I remember the smell, some of the trailers. Like, it's like a home feeling now if I go on a movie set. I remember uh, him being on the set of Free Willy, for God's sakes. Wow. You know, he's just a little kid. He kicked Alec Baldwin right in the balls on the set of The Getaway. You remember that? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Did no, he piss I, you had off? A picture. No, I warned him. I no, said. it was something I did as a kid. I was no, like, he just, uh, it was, why did you do that? I don't know. I, it was like a way for me to gauge if you were, you know, if I could trust you or not. Yeah, I'd no. just throw a kick at I, I warned him. Alex says, oh, you know, I heard your son's on the set. I go, yeah, you know, he's here. Well, yeah, I said, Christian. And he goes, I want to go meet him. And I said, oh, yeah, he says, we, be careful because why did he likes somebody to take a photo the too? There's well, a photo of the exact Yeah, I know, Alex up in the I air like him. that. Because he actually placed himself to get kicked. That was so weird that he did that. He was that. looking for it. Because I warned him. I said, my son likes to kick people in the balls. So, you know, <laughs> just be careful when you meet him, okay? And he walks over to Christian. He stands right in front of him like that. And sure enough, he... <laughs> I honestly can't tell if this is a bit. This is no, no, this is no. It happened. Very That's true. amazing. Someone took a picture of it. Well, Alex in the air because he leaped at the last moment. He jumped up, and so the kick didn't really get him. You know, and probably I, better for everyone that way. I just can't believe he did, walked up and stood that way because I warned him. You know, mm. and uh, yeah, he's testing you, Christian. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you failed or passed. Do you remember? That was pretty funny. Do you remember the first time you saw your dad in a film? Did you, like the first time you saw Reservoir Dogs, or like the the first like, oh my God, my dad's, that's my dad. Did right. that moment happen? Never. Really? No, because it's just my dad. That's awesome. You know, like yeah. if if I had that moment, I don't know if I would be here, like doing this. You know, maybe I would be doing something else. Like for sure. me, it was so. It's just my dad. It's always been that way. And it w it's been a humbling experience, too, because I've seen a lot of good sides of the business and a lot of bad sides. And so I've just tried to stay humble throughout. And yeah. so when I went on my own path to be an actor and make a little film, it wasn't like me being like, remember that thing? It's, it, it was just, for me, it was always like trying to collaborate or do stuff and with a humble outlook on it. Yeah, that's, 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 for, that's for me to sit here and hear you say that is like really great. Because I was always scared about the bad side of it all, you know? And I didn't want him to ever go through that. Mm. It's not this big joy ride that everybody thinks it is, you know? It's not that at all. It's, uh, it can really ruin you if you let and it. And it starts uh, tonight. Everything goes bad, though. This is the beginning of the end. Though. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> This is the good part of it, you know? This is the, the fun part of the business, to be able to come to a film festival and hang around you know, be some we're here with someone like Tara and the documentary she made. I was just gonna say you're that's here with two good, films man. this year. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. So I got my thing, and he's got his thing. So. And last night was the first time that you saw the documentary QT8. How did you? Yeah. How did you like it? Uh, I was very impressed with it. I was very happy with it. I really don't enjoy watching myself in stuff. You know, I always, you know, why did I sit like that, or why did I tilt my head like that, and stupid things like that. You know, and. But I really enjoyed it for, I, I was surprised that I liked it that much because I'm always very critical of everything in life. You know, I'm one of those cynical people, but um, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I thought it was really good, actually. Yeah. It's genuine to Quentin, and uh, Tara did an amazing, wonderful job, and I'm blessed to be in the damn thing, honestly, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm, that's great. Did you like it? I loved it, yeah. I mean, it was inspiring for me, like, the way they tied everything together, and. Just even coming here as a filmmaker and watching a documentary like that, about someone who started out like that and where he is now, it's, it's very inspiring, the way they did it all, yeah. He's kind of a phenomenon, Quentin, you know, he really is, you can't, there's nobody like him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you watch a movie that he did, you can tell that he did it. Of course. And that's like, you know, like, like Hitchcock or, or George Stevens or somebody, you can tell by the work without even knowing who did it, who did it, you know? And that's what separates him, I think, from the regular normal filmmakers, you know. For sure. And he kept me employed. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys, I have some like random just film questions. Sure. Or, or not even necessarily film questions, just random questions. So I have uh, 15 of them. Would you pick three numbers between one and 15? You want me to do that? Yeah. Three, three. numbers between one and 15? Yes, please. Eight. Uh-huh. 
what was it? One in fifteen? <laughs> thirteen? Thirteen's my lucky number. Yeah. Two? Eight, thirteen, and two. Okay. Uh, number eight. eight. Uh, what's your favorite Tom Cruise movie? <laughs> 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 That's tough. It's a tie They're between. They're all incredible. It's a tie Has between. Has he ever made a bad uh, one? Far Never. and away. They're all incredible. It's a tie between Far and Away and Eyes Wide Shut. Okay. I like that thing where he played the pilot. It's a drug runner. What's it called? Oh. Something America or something? Yeah. Um, American he, Made. He flies a American Made. A private American plane. Made. Right? Yes. Yeah, he yeah. thought he was good in that. That was a great movie. Yeah, that was cool to see him play that. It was okay. a good movie. <laughs> Excellent. Number yeah. thirteen. Uh, would you rather hit a game-winning homer, or throw a game-winning touchdown, or Oof. hit a game-winning or a jump shot at the buzzer? Oh man, home run would be pretty cool. I threw an opening pitch at a Cubs game. What? And so did he. Are you yeah. a Cubs fan? At Wrigley, yeah. Wrigley Field, yeah. I threw a pitch in the opening game. You know, it was, was a bummer, though, because I was walking out to the mound to throw the ball. And I had a Cubs jersey on and everything, right? You know, and I had practiced the throw. It's a 60-foot throw. And I had practiced it, right? I knew I was going to get it over the plate at least. Not like an idiot. <laughs> and I'm walking out to the mound, and they're like, Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Madsen will be throwing the opening pitch. And I was like, yeah. And all of a sudden, he goes, Best known as the sadistic Mr. Blonde. I was like, okay, <laughs> you need to tell that to 30,000 people. It was a, a very strange moment. <laughs> the sadistic Mr. Blonde. Anyway, I threw the ball and I, I, I did it, yeah. It went over the plate? Yeah, you did too, right? Yeah, yeah it, it was nice. Yeah. It was quite an experience. Yeah. A, it was a good throw. That's awesome. It was high and outside, actually. <laughs> okay, number two. What is your, uh, your last meal, like your death row meal? Fried chicken. <laughs> Fried chicken, mashed potatoes from my stepmom. She makes it the best. Yeah, that's, that's the best fried chicken? It's the best. Yeah, it's the best. It's pretty good, yeah. Do you put sides with it or just, you're just going for the chicken, baby? No, horseradish. mashed potatoes. Oh. Mashed potatoes. Horseradish? <laughs> yeah. I like that just about anything. Oh. Yeah. I make my own hot sauce, by the way. American badass. How do we up. get some of that? It's on the internet if you look it up. All right. Michael Manson hot sauce or. Uh, American Badass Products. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Mammoth. That's Mammoth FF keeping you in the loop. Awesome. Thank you, guys.